Emily Burton is an MS4 program specialist and operations stream shield program manager, and she works with the Fairfax County government. She has a master's in science in environmental management and a bachelor's of science in fisheries management. Emily's career has been centered around environmental policy, pollution prevention, and enhancing communities while building lives. She will be joined with um, by Eleanor Ellie uh, uh, Klugel of the Clean Streams program. She manages that program for Clean Fairfax. Clean Fairfax is an environmental nonprofit focused on reducing litter and pollution in Fairfax County. In this role, she leads key elements of Clean Fairfax's work on litter reduction through stream monitoring, data collection, and writing reports. Eleanor hold, holds a BS degree in biology and a master's in digital communications. She's passionate about science communication and advocating for stronger plastic policy and stronger clean water policy. Uh, Emily will be joining us virtually and Ellie, I understand is in the room. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for hosting me as a presenter today. I'm co-hosting with Ellie Klugel, Clean Fairfax Council. I will review how Operation Stream Shield OSS began and how we strengthened the program through growing pains. In 2019, next slide, please. In 2019, the DPWAS director was looking at the city of uh, Albuquerque because they set up a very similar program to combat litter while providing income for individuals who were panhandling. We piloted this program in 2019 to combat litter in our streams. This is in line with our MS4 permit, which requires us to reduce floatables discharged to our MS4 to the maximum extent practical. Due to its success, due to its success contracts were executed and as the pandemic ramped up, so did we in OSS. We were able to successfully continue cleaning up green spaces during the height of the pandemic. Next slide. While developing OSS, we closely coordinated with the Office to Prevent and Homelessness. This office highly recommended that we work with shelters that only admit clients who are 18 or older, also known as single shelters. This is for liability purposes. The Eleanor, Mar um, the Eleanor Kennedy Shelter, Bailey's Crossroads, and Embry-Rucker Shelters are county-owned. And then we also have the Lamb Center who is participating and they are not county-owned, but still act as such for single shelters. And that's not a detail that I'll go into during this presentation. We have eight work days per week, recurring visits to our I-66 transfer station and I-95 landfill, as well as visiting our national park neighbor, um, our Bellhaven property there. Each shelter will work at various sites for four hours twice a week. The nonprofits then provide the compensation to the clients at the end of each workday. Right now, clients are receiving $13 an hour. They will receive a dollar uh, increase starting July 1st of this year. The site leader, who is somebody who has an opportunity to go into more of a leadership role, receives $15 an hour. This program is currently funded through the stormwater fund and also the plastic bag tax. Next slide, please. The roles and responsibilities of OSS are complex, but here is a brief breakdown. The county identifies and assigns sites to nonprofits, then selects, then the nonprofits select clients to go out for the work days. They also provide workers' compensation 
transportation, and supervision during the workday. They will also provide a checklist of items that they've collected throughout their workday. And then us within the county, we will work with our solid waste uh, group to remove the debris after the workday. Next slide. While Fairfax County meets, the county is one Fairfax policy and equity initiatives. We are also in the process of gathering data to ensure all OSS participants receive benefit from this program. Next slide, please. Our OSS population is very similar to the Office to Prevent and Homelessness data. For individuals who are experiencing homelessness, so because there is a strong correlation between the two, it shows that our program is open and offers opportunity to everyone who wants this opportunity. In fiscal year 23, we serve 486 client individuals, 53 graduated onto sustainable employment, and we welcome two from that 53 into the county. Next slide, please. This program works with county staff, community members, state and federal agencies. OSS needed to expand the scope of work beyond litter because there just wasn't enough public land for us to have large groups to safely access the litter. Community members have told us that the streams that they have worked so hard to clean for years, having OSS as a resource, the streams have looked better than they have ever looked before, which is wonderful feedback to hear that we are out there and we are doing great things for our community and our streams. We also have invasive plant removal that we've added to our program, which has helped us maintain and be a more sustainable program as a whole. Invasive species, unfortunately, are very hard to combat, but through Operation Stream Shield, we're able to chip away very slowly at this problem. In addition to invasive work, OSS is also maintaining trails for pedestrians or bikes to utilize um, through mowing and trimming vegetation. We also go over to our solid waste management programs and help tidy up those facilities to ensure that they are good neighbors and keeping down the litter that may blow over when people are coming to dispose of their trash. And going back to the invasive species, it is very important to note that when you're removing the invasive species, once you have enough ground that is bare, planting native plants to try and get them to uh, take over where they once may have grown before invasive plants came in. I also want to highlight uh, an exciting project that we'll be working on in the beginning of April. This will be at the I-66 transfer station where residents will bring unused paint um, and we will be utilizing OSS to put unused paint in specified containers that will be shipped out to vulnerable countries for reuse. This will allow us to reduce the paint incineration by 85%, but more realistically, around 95%. But we'll be tracking that to get more concrete data in the future. This will be a zero waste effort by and also providing job development skills for participants of Operation Stream Shield. Next slide, please. So I mentioned the zero waste effort that we we're working with at Solid Waste. I also want to highlight an opportunity that we've developed with 
Noman Coal, our wastewater plant at the county. They have a hybrid approach in developing workforce development. We are five clients who have stood out and want to move forward into sustainable employment. We'll be selected to go to Noman Coal once a week for eight hours, typically within three to five months of this effort of going to Noman Coal once a month. Um, participants will be given the opportunity to apply to positions with the county through a contracted temp agency. If candidates are successful through this, they will be given an Uber ride. One way to ensure that they have transportation to or from um, employment because Noman Coal is a 24 hour facility and public transportation does not operate 24 hours. So Operation Stream Shield does strive, as I mentioned before, to provide job development opportunities for clients participating on OSS. I just mentioned one through Noman Coal. We are also working on creating other mechanisms through solid waste. We have been successful to hire maintenance workers and seasonal laborers at solid waste. And Park Authority and Stormwater, unfortunately, um, aren't able to utilize our temp agencies, but we've been able to hire um, non-merit and merit positions through those avenues. Next slide, please. Within um, fiscal year 23, we removed 7,546 bags of trash, and we also removed 373 bags of invasives. The invasive bag count is a little bit low because sometimes people during work days um, will do clip and drop because their seeds aren't going to spread everywhere. Um, or we just have dumpsters that are filled and it's a little bit more challenging to estimate that. But that's an improvement that we'll be working on as we mature a bit more in this program. As I mentioned before, engaging partners is very critical. And we have been coordinating with Clean Fairfax to enhance our litter control. Ellie will review our private-public partnership and the methodology for litter collection. Next slide, please. All right, so as Emily said, um, beginning in fiscal year 2023, DPWES brought in Clean Fairfax to expand data collection at OSS cleanups. We've had a really fruitful public-private partnership with um, the stormwater planning division out of Public Works for nearly eight years now to assist in floatables monitoring um, to fulfill their MS4 permit compliance. However, this extension of our partnership is an excellent example of leveraging both partners' areas of strength and expertise. DPWES and OSS with that countywide vision and access to litter hotspots, as well as the workforce development angle, and Clean Fairfax with the insight from our litter monitoring, as well as our cornerstone community cleanup program and policy advocacy experience. And so we entered this new phase of partnership and began crafting a pilot for litter data collection with two goals in mind. First, to obtain data that was detailed enough um, to give us a full picture of the state of litter in Fairfax County and robust enough to potentially help some advocacy efforts down the line. And secondly, to minimize disruption to the current workflow and efficiency of OSS crews. Next slide, please. We developed the two-bag system and softly launched this pilot with a few crews last spring. In our two-bag system, we separate recyclable material from general trash. And from this, we get two main points of data. First, we get the counts of each category. So how many bags of trash, how many bags of recycling, and then we convert this to volume metrics. The second point of data we get is our qualitative descriptions and observations from our site leads and the dominant materials that they're seeing out in the field. We tried not to overcomplicate the sorting process by introducing too many material specific bags, but we do hope to separate glass out in the future as well. And ideally that would look like a separate container for glass and that glass would be picked up, cleaned and dropped off at the purple cans in Fairfax County. Glass continues to be a dominant material at our OSS sites and it certainly reflects a large portion of the weight of the bags that are being pulled out. 
So it'd be ideal if we could isolate that material into its own separate stream um, and actually bring it to be recycled because a lot of the material, the recyclables that we're bringing in at this point are unfortunately too contaminated to go to the MRF. So if we can clean our glass and send it and get it back into that circular system, that would be fantastic. So following the soft launch, um, we expanded our two bag system to include all four nonprofits in all regions of the county last summer. And we constantly checked in with them to see how it was going, how the sorting process was, if it was hampering workflow, and to address any other pain points that were emerging. And you can see in the image on the right, that's me weighing bags in the field. Um, that's something we began doing pretty regularly, uh, just to check in on the sorting, make sure it was mostly correct within small margin of error, and then also to obtain some accurate weights of bags of each material. So this was to help us estimate um, and refine our formulas for estimating the bag weights that we'll use in our reporting. Because we wanted to ensure that our conversions were accurate with what we saw in Fairfax County instead of relying on external calculations. Next slide, please. So this is a graphic that we developed for OSS Cruise, um, and it came out of one of the early pain points, which was people had different interpretations of what was recyclable. So some crew members were very engaged, um, knew a lot about recycling. They were asking questions about numbered plastics and EPS foam and where they should put their glass. And others didn't know as much or were just inconsistent in their sorting. And so to try and address this barrier, um, we developed this simplified graphic to indicate what materials should go in which bag. And as you can see, we included both English and Spanish instructions to include some clients who may not speak English as a first language. Next slide, please. All right, diving into some of the results. So initially, we confirmed some suspicions that we already had about the makeup of litter in Fairfax County, which was that there was a lot of recyclable material out there amidst the general trash. And anecdotally, Emily and I were out in the field quite a bit, and it seemed like almost every other site we were visiting was pulling out near even bags of recycling and trash. Um, and obviously those were different in their weights and how full each bags were, but it was pretty promising to see both a lot of recycling bags and trash bags represented. And it's important to note that we're just now coming up on the one year anniversary of our soft launch um, of our two bag system, which was only used by a few crews at the time. So there's definitely still a gap in our data um, and that limits what conclusions we can draw at this point. It might take several more months to years to really build up a robust data set that we can analyze. Um, but until we have that, we're able to rely on our qualitative observations and the descriptions um, and feedback from our system that we get from ourselves and from our site leads, um, which has demonstrated a really high quantity of recyclable material. As demonstrated by the word cloud here on the right-hand side, we see the larger font words are the most often described terms from our site leads. And we see in bold bottles, paper, plastic, bags, uh, beer, cans, et cetera. Those are all things that in theory could have been collected and recycled. Next slide, please. Okay, so how does this data support our end goals? Well, initially we see that the trash is gone and that's an immediate impact. It's one that is very tangible. The public's often very happy with that. And so that will continue to be a foundational goal of the OSS program. And our second goal is a little more zoomed out. And that is that the data that we obtain from these daily OSS cleanups has the potential to support some really systemic change. Things like plastic policy, updated property management and waste codes, adopting new local ordinances and helping lawmakers in Richmond to craft legislation using actual data from the communities that they represent. For example, preliminary observations we have demonstrated a high quantity of food and beverage items. Well, high levels of beverage bottles um, and aluminum cans might demonstrate a need for a bottle bill, kind of like Zach was talking about earlier. And similarly, a high quantity of expanded polystyrene or EPS foam reflects the need for a foam ban in food service, because that is a really highly littered material. Um, it breaks up, but it does not break down. And there are so many viable alternatives on the market now. So that could look like adjusting the statewide phase out of foam in Virginia. And then when we begin glass collection, we're hoping that that could be another indicator of opportunity for a bottle bill or other type of take back schemes. 
And ultimately, we recognize that we're still in the early days of this enhanced litter collection system. So we don't have all, all the data that we'd like to have yet. And we know there are still obstacles and growing pains that we're gonna have to remedy. However, having this body of data available to us is really valuable because it can help us turn attention to the problem areas, trace back the sources of a lot of this pollution and ask the important questions. Like, why is it that we're seeing so many bottles and cans? Is it littering or is it mismanaged waste? Is it overflowing trash cans? And for our work at Clean Fairfax, this type of data helps us tell really powerful stories about the path of litter in our county and advocate for the right changes in order to turn off the tap. Next slide, please. All right, so I love this slide because it's a great demonstration of OSS in action. On the left-hand side, you see a very polluted littered part of Little Hunting Creek which is a tributary of the Potomac in Eastern Fairfax County. Um, like I said, it's really mucked up. And in the middle, you can see an OSS crew member getting to work, picking all of that up, leading to the final result on the right-hand side. And that's the ideal situation. That's what we want all of our streams to look like all the time. But unfortunately, Little Hunting Creek is an example of a site that OSS crews have to visit quite often. So maybe in a few months time, the image on the right will look again like it does on the left-hand side. It'll be filled up again. And repeatedly cleaning up sites like these doesn't really solve the litter or the plastic pollution problem. It just solves it for that day. So we're hoping that OSS data, both these bags pulled out and the weights of those bags, but also the frequency that we're having to deploy OSS crews to these types of sites can inform some really sustainable upstream solutions so that we can prevent that trash from getting there in the first place. Next slide, please. Finally, this pilot has been really informative in multiple ways. First, despite the many ways that trash arrives and accumulates at OSS sites, we recognize that illegal dumping and littering are still an issue and a challenge in Fairfax County. And currently we don't have much legislation to back up and enforce um, these types of things. So again, a hope of the pilot is to provide more information to update some of these policies and help with the front and back ends of, litter, of the litter pollution problem. And Emily, I'll pass it off to you. Thank you, Ellie. While this program has largely been a success, I wanted to introduce a few other lessons learned. Access to sites has been challenging and we also avoid encampments because this is a program that we work with individuals who are experiencing homelessness. We don't want this to be a triggering experience for anyone. So it's something that we actively do not enter our encampments and we work very closely with our office to prevent and homelessness to ensure that we are sending crews out to areas that will be appropriate. We also do not work on private property and we do not work on public school property either, which does make access a little bit more challenging, especially since we do not have large areas of public space to access. We do work within our parks very regularly. I will say that's been very easy, but sometimes pulling off of the side of the road and being able to walk down to a stream valley, is a bit challenging. So it's something that we do face regularly. We are also, um, we softly launched our GIS mobile application the beginning of this year and look forward to fully transitioning everybody over to that, making sure that everyone has been trained up on it and utilizing it, feeling very comfortable has been a bit of a challenge because everyone's skills are very different in utilizing technology. We also have had, um, some challenges, but I think we've been able to work, change it into a strength of the program as a whole. But I'm a trained environmental personnel, and we work very closely with human services personnel. So sometimes making sure that we are um, saying the same thing and meaning the same thing has been a bit of a challenge, but I think as the program has matured a bit, we've become great in our communication skills with one another. 
Also from a visual observation, this program is more cost effective in removing litter and other mechanical BMPs. We are looking forward to utilizing some of the volume data that is collected through the effort that we're working on with Clean Fairfax to have more concrete numbers on just how cost effective OSS is versus say a band along or storm X traps. Thank you all so much for your time. If you go to the next slide that has um, Ellie and um, Ellie and I, our contact information. So please don't hesitate to reach out. I did see a few questions pop up in the chat also. That was fantastic. Thank you both for sharing with us. We have uh, some time for a couple of questions. We'll start in the room if anyone has questions here. I have a, a question. Is all of the, the data that you're gathering publicly available anywhere? That is a great question. Right now, it is not publicly available, but we are working on developing a dashboard that can be uh, interactive on our public facing webpage. So stay tuned, I'm gonna say about six months, give or take a little bit, uh, there will be something up there for everyone to see. Awesome, I will uh, put a reminder for six months. Thank you. Uh, Katie, do we have questions in the chat? Yes, we have at least two. Uh, one is about funding of this program. I believe you mentioned that it's funded from stormwater fees. Uh, is that the sole source of funding for this program or do some of the other organizations uh, contribute with in-kind? That is a great question. So right now it is uh, funded through the stormwater fund. Um, however, we have been utilizing the bag tax money. So whenever anyone goes to the store and forgets their reusable bags, we uh, receive a portion of that. I can't exactly remember the exact number. I think it's three cents to the five cents that is required to be sent over to us. So we'll utilize that. Um, and if the funding source does eventually run up, run dry, we will work with our partners to ensure that this program still continues. Great, thank you. Uh, another question is, what recyclables does Fairfax County collect and actually send to recycling facilities? For example, our plastics, um, high density polyethylene and PETE, uh, those are easily recyclable, but many municipalities have stopped collecting all other plastic types. Uh, and a few collect, uh, or very few collect uh, paper cartons. So uh, yeah, so what portion is actually recycled? Ellie, do you want to take that? Yeah, um, I don't know if I can speak to what portion is actually recycled. Um, so I don't have that data off the top of my head, but I think to the best of my knowledge, most common plastic types, at least types one and two are highly recycled in Fairfax County. Um, I think one issue we run into in our county is we have so many different private haulers and sometimes we have different haulers picking up different things and different ways that they go about doing their business. Um, Fairfax County itself does have a collection service, but it only serves something like 9% of the households in our very large county. Um, so it's very inconsistent. And I think that kind of confounds the problem is we don't really have a good number to get a um, of like what types and what percentages of all recyclable in theory material is actually ending up recycled. So it's not a, a complete answer, but if if you have anything to add, Emily. I don't. Okay. Are there any more online questions, Katie? Yes, um, two more just came in. Is it possible, no, this is not litter related, but somebody asks, is it possible to compost the invasive plants that are collected? Or is that a concern because seeds might spread through such compost? 
Thank you. Yes, this is a wonderful question. And it is something that we we're investigating. Um, our program for composting is now live uh, through solid waste. And I think that it should heat up enough, but I think that there was some concern of that unknown. And since people may use some of the compost to go in their gardens and such, we didn't want to risk it, but definitely something that we can look into a bit more as that pro the composting program matures more. Great. And then the very last question, um, oops, sorry, my chat box just moved. With regards to the two bag system where one bag is recyclable, one bag is not recyclable, is that more for demonstration purposes and data collection or um, are the things in the recycling bags actually able to be recycled? The concern here is contamination, uh, which renders a lot of otherwise recyclable items unrecyclable. Right. So for right now, it's... Um just for data collection purposes. So we know what the makeup of litter looks like, uh, but yeah, the contamination is definitely an issue, um, especially with a lot of the sites that OSS is going to, which might be streams, stream valleys. Um, they go out in almost all kinds of weather. So as soon as you get really wet conditions, um, these sites turn pretty gross and the material is not able to go. It's not clean enough to go to the MRF. So mainly just for data collection, but the hope is with glass that that could actually be cleaned off and taken to a MRF. Great, thank you. And that's the last question online, Zach. Awesome, thank you, Katie.